The public's fascination with SEAL Team 6, this is the Navy SEAL team that killed Osama bin Laden, continues to rise. And now St. Martin's Press is rushing to get a book about SEAL Team 6 into print. It could be available as early as May 10th. And sitting with me is the lead author of that book. His name is Howard Waston, and he's a former Navy SEAL and also a member of the very elite uh, SEAL Team 6. Howard, welcome. Thank you very much. Former member of SEAL Team 6. Okay, a former member. And your book is called SEAL Team 6, Memoirs of an Elite Navy SEAL Sniper. That's right. Your co-author on this is Stephen Templin. Yes. Tell me what the past two days have been like for you and the people in this very elite and small group. Have you been in contact with any of your former colleagues? Uh, nobody that was involved in the hit, obviously. But um, it's been sort of like vindication, you know when all three times I was shot um, in Somalia was due to people who were backed by Osama bin Laden. So when I found out yesterday morning that my guys, you know, hmm. SEAL Team 6 had actually taken him out, I was, I was very happy. And I was even more happy when I found out nobody was injured or killed, Lee. So that was a, a bonus. And a lot of interest in the actual killing itself and the current Team 6. The whole process, they say, took 40 minutes and there were 22 people captured. Uh, and or killed. Based on your knowledge, how difficult was this mission? It's extremely difficult. As you know, um, <clears throat> anybody who's seen the movie Black Hawk Down, we took down several compounds, a few houses, etc. And anytime you go into a situation like that, you're spreading yourself thin. You've got the worry of people on the outside coming in trying to assist the enemy, which you know could have happened in Pakistan, given the uh, surroundings. So you're, um, you're you're worried about that kind of stuff happening. But for this optic to go the way it did, <clears throat> with only one small hiccup with a helicopter, nobody to get injured, everybody killed that needed to be killed, and the detainees taken out in that amount of time, this is like, uh, this is like the storybook um, special operations. I've never heard, and I've never been involved in an op that went that smoothly. So, hats off to everybody involved. And you look at the training for this kind of mission. What goes into that? Oh well, wow. how, how long do we have? Um, of course, the training is a everyday continual thing at all the SEAL teams, SEAL Team 6 um, included. You train every single day, even if you're not getting ready for an op. Most people don't realize that. There's so many skills you have to hone. CQB, are you familiar with that term? No, I'm not. Close quarters battle, um, your sniper shots, your coordinated assaults, assault uh, from sea, air, land. Am I skydiving in? Am I swimming in? Am I um, diving in? fast roping in like these guys did. And in this case, they set up a mock compound to practice th this. Yes, yes, and that's, and that's great. The fact that they had the time to do that efforts their training and makes them um, you know, more set on the way things are gonna be when you get there. We've done hits before just setting up like little string houses where you put some stakes in the ground and run some strings and that's all you got. Having this mock compound was probably invaluable in their um, takedown. What goes through a SEAL's head when they're going through a mission like this? Well, as you're gearing up for the mission, you take everything systematically step by step. First thing that would go through my head is, okay, the mission's a go. Let me get my equipment ready, gear up, test fire my weapon, do a comm check, everything that goes in this little checklist of things you've got to go through, which are hundreds of things. Then um, you've got to take um, everybody aside and um, go through one more time, dirt dive. Okay, this is my mission. When I hit the ground, I'm first man, for example, uh, to kick the fast rope, usually on my ops. And I kick the fast rope, put everybody out of the helicopter, go down, what order you go down, who's holding security. And then you've got the daunting task of people shooting at you while you're trying to get all this right. Unbelievable. You have the movie already written here. <laughs> uh, this book chronicles a highly specialized group, the Naval Special Warfare Development Group. This is a unit of the Joint Special Operations Command, J.O. JSOC, JSOC. Yeah. A lot of us aren't familiar with that term. Tell me what that is. JSOC, like, like you said, is Joint Special Operations Command. <clears throat> One of the good things that happened back um, probably in the middle to late 80s is we all started playing nice in the special operations community. Um, Rangers started working with Air Force. Air Force CT guys started working with um, SEALs, PJs, and we all found out that working together and that teamwork that we're always preaching um, helped us all. You, um, I've learned from some of your skills. You took away some things from me. So the Joint Special Operation Command really was a good first step in getting all these specialized teams together 
to, ex to execute these types of ops. And there was some criticism from some members of Congress because it costs a billion dollars a year, right? That's a report. But now, doesn't this kind of vindicate the group or any of that criticism? I hope most members of Congress, especially the ones that I help elect, are saying money well spent today, okay? And uh, we were talking earlier, you said that you uh, have been a staunch Republican over the years. <laughs> and now, what's your take on the Obama yeah, I'm, administration? I've, ha I've, I've had to reverse a little bit in the past couple of days. I'm not saying I'm not a Republican anymore, but I am giving credit to President Obama and his administration for the way they handled this. Operational security is what killed us in Mogadishu, Somalia. The United Nations was there. Everybody knew what everybody else was doing. We had no OPSEC. Obviously, his administration and probably the, uh, the president himself made the call that we're going to ask for forgiveness instead of permission from Pakistan. That way, no one was alerted. Guys got able, were able to go in, do the job, and get out. So once again, well done to the administration. So the president it, it was intimately involved in this. For us to go conduct an op in Pakistan that was not announced beforehand, that there's only one place that call can come from. Enough and Hillary Clinton didn't make that call. I enough promise. to change your vote? We'll see. You know, you have to start somewhere, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. If he um, gives the $10 million to the guys who did the op, that's uh, the reward for bin Laden, that'll be another uh, swing toward maybe changing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your book. Uh, there are several books springing up on this subject, but you're the one that really takes people inside to uh, the Navy SEAL Team 6. What will differentiate this, this book? Okay, first of all, the big thing that will differentiate is <clears throat> you'll see the human side of somebody who became a SEAL. For example, I go through being born two months premature and almost dying to a teenage mom coming up, um, you know, pretty harsh, um, adopted stepdad who was very abusive. But instead of becoming a statistic, keeping your eyes focused on something better, uh, something more, and like I said, overcoming adversity and becoming part of a pretty elite crew. There's no chest thumping in the book. I don't you know, beat on my chest and say, look at me. I'm Howard Wasden. I attempt to show the training and as much as I can without divulging tactics and show the humanity that really goes into molding, in my opinion, the fi finest warriors on the planet. And then in the end, when all that's gone, my marriage is gone, I've been shot three times, I can't do what I love to do anymore, and I'm in the darkest hour of depression in my life, what do you do to rise from those ashes? And that's um, how I finished the book. So one of the things you do is you become a chiropractor. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I always tell everybody. You're I'm practicing in, in Georgia right yes, now. Yes, I have uh, a great practice, and I've got great patients who I love and who seem to love me down in southeast Georgia. And my only regret coming to New York the past couple of days is I had to reschedule a lot of them. But uh, yeah, I love my job. I'm sure they understand, right? It, it, it's fascinating because these missions rarely leak to the public. There's not a lot that people find out about these missions. But in this case, uh, the military uh, has opened up and talked about it. Did you have to pledge some things to secrecy uh, in the writing of this book? Uh, absolutely. Well, there were some things that, you know, you just take to your grave with you. Tactics, uh, tactics and techniques um, uh, being one of those. So um, the other thing I had to wait, as I stated, for the CIA to declassify the ops that I did with them in Somalia and how that was run. And that's already been well documented in the Washington Post. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of using common sense. And there are operational security things that'll, that'll never be told, you know, from these lips or anybody else who's been a part of that unit. What kind of reaction do you expect to get or have you been getting from the Navy SEAL community over this book? You know what? I haven't gotten anything um, adverse from the community. Um, SEAL Team 6 has been written about before by uh, Dick Marcinko when he wrote uh, Rogue Warrior. Um, I actually show the SEALs in a much better light because I'm not vindictive. I didn't get sent to prison like Dick Marcinko did, you know, for uh, supposedly doing something bad that's here nor there. But um, I actually show what a good group of Americans these guys are and um, what it takes to uh, join this elite service. And you worked on this book for 12 years? A little longer. I actually started in 1994 with my field notes. Um, went uh, for years and years waiting for things to be declassified, find out what I could and couldn't talk about. Mark Bowden basically uh, wrote uh, Black Hawk Down, so then my cover's blown, so here's 
how it was. So I was like, okay, now just wait on the CIA to go ahead and clear up what we did there, and then I can write the book. And I want to add here, um, without Steve Templin, my co-author, I'd have probably never made it. I can't see 160 patients a week, be a family man, and still have written this book uh, without Steve, who also started in my uh, buds class at uh, SEAL school. Oh, okay. So he actually had some background in the military yep. as well. He did. He, uh, he made it all the way through uh, Hell Week, and then after going through Hell Week, which is the hardest part, and then decided that wasn't for him. Take me back to the day, the moment that you found out that Osama was dead. That's good because I was sitting um, around in my pajama pants because I don't open the clinic till two on Mondays. <laughs> and I hear this knock at my door real early as I'm getting the dogs out of the house, getting ready to take them for a walk. And um, it's my preacher who lives across the street from me, who's a friend of mine. He says, hey neighbor, just wanted to come over and tell you happy Bin Laden's dead day. I'm like, what are you talking about, Mike? He's like, oh, you didn't hear? SEAL Team 6 shot him in the head and he turned around and walked off. I'm oh like, goodness. what is he doing here? So I went in and turned the television on and you know, that's how I found out about it. And when you think back to, to that, um, you know, just... Hair on my arm stood up, hair on the back of my neck stood up. Uh, you can ask my wife, I couldn't sit down. I was like walking around, uh, bringing back good and bad memories, you know, hearing about the takedown. And I really didn't relax and start taking it easy until I found out that no one was injured, no one was killed, you know, because that type of op, the, uh, the um, probability of that is, you know, very high that somebody's going to be at least injured, if not killed, on the good side. Fascinating story. We look forward to your book, Howard Waston. Thank you so much for bringing right. awareness you and bet. informing us about this elite group of military. Thanks for officers. having me on, and God bless the U.S. military. All right.